On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, heavy trade deadline stuff. It's Thursday, and some deals have already gone down. Keith and I dive into it all next, including the Sixers' loss to the Celtics. What went wrong? Right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook on Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. What's good, D? Uh, The NBA trade deadline. Uh, It it was good. (laughs) And then I got mad a little bit, but it's all good. It's all good, man. They check still cash on the first and the fifteenth. That it does. That it does. Uh, but uh, we'll get into all of that here in a second. Welcome, you are locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Gibbons from 97.5, the Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-host Keith Pompey, Sixers beat writer with the Enquirer.com. Thanks for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On 76ers is free and available on all platforms, including right here at YouTube. Locked on 76ers. Keith, trade deadline is in full effect, my man. While the Sixers have not done anything as of yet, uh, we have a lot of stuff that has already been done. We'll get into that. We'll certainly talk about the Sixers 106 99 loss to the Boston Celtics, where the Celtics couldn't miss from three. And Doc Rivers did not like the defense. He felt like offensively, uh, they played more, uh, the, the individual guys did things, but as a team, they didn't do what they needed to do. And they didn't play again, Keith. This has become a common theme with spirit. So we'll talk about what that spirit is as we go along. But um, let's start with the game. Quickly. Hold on. What does that mean, though? I mean, that's what I'm asking you. You know so what I mean? Like, like, it's it's like <laughs> I mean, all right. So I, yeah, I don't like, I mean, so like basically, y'all just got smacked in the mouth in three of your last five games. I mean, the one time y'all came back and y'all, like, you know, they hit y'all with a couple uh, uppercuts. You ducked and hit them with a couple jabs, got off the ropes, and then went the de- decision. I'm talking about Orlando the second time after they got knocked out. Then you 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 basically have to hold off, like, the Spurs, and then you get trashed two games in a row. Now, like, this game, this last one last night was 106-99, to 99, Right. But we're talking about they had my man Blake Griffin out there trying to be Steph Curry. You had uh, Grant Williams out there muscling dudes. You had Jason Tatum taking out his own teammates, giving out concussions, so so Jalen Brown couldn't play. Jason Tatum probably had one of his worst shooting nights over all around. And you had Luke Cornett. Dunking all over Joel, right? So you talking about spirit? Nah, dog. It's a trend right about now. Like, it, I ain't trying to say the ship be sinking, but you got to do something to get it right right about now. You can't just keep saying the spirit. Like, there was no adjustments either. Like, we were talking about this beforehand. Blake Griffin, they left him wide open. He was three for three early on on threes. Three for free. Three for three. You thinking somebody was going to come get them? Nah, none. So that's what happens. Everybody starts shooting threes. They ended up shooting 19 for 35, 54.3% from the three. No adjustments. So we can't talk about spirit. We can't. We can't talk about spirit. And uh, with their 19, the sixes were only able to make 10 of theirs on the night so the nets uh pardon me nets are on my mind um the uh, boston celtics uh were plus nine in their made three pointers tonight against the 76 or so uh that their defense was poor uh in there and as as doc rivers talked about he called it poor defense uh that they just simply were unable to do what they needed to do defensively they had a game plan early 
Uh, they they had, as he called it, with the uh, three pointers, the dare threes early on with Blake Griffin, and you talked about it, Keith. He made those first two, and then he made you defend him. He made him be close out on him, and I thought that was a fine thing to do early on. Uh, but once the, he made him, the idea had to be to close things out. So uh, it hurt them. And not only did those two in the first half make, uh, what was it, six three-pointers between the two, Grant mm-hmm. Williams Grant Williams, and Blake Griffin, but they ended up with nine of the ten three-pointers made tonight. And these are two that were in the starting lineup because in the front court, you did not have Al Horford, nor did you have Robert Williams at the center position. So those two started in place of those guys, and they contributed 15 points each, hitting those threes. And that was the difference in the game, man. Derek White and Malcolm Brogdon led with 19. They hit their fair share of threes. Sam Hauser hit his threes. He had 14 off the bench. They just – they have a problem with the Boston Celtics. But to your point, it may be something even deeper that they're going to have to look into because of the other opponents as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean, but here's the thing. We're talking about the Boston Celtics. This was essentially Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics backups. And Tatum didn't do anything. Nah, that's what I'm saying. He shot five for 15. So it was him. I mean, you know, you got Derek White, but, but you know, essentially it was him and the backups. Him and the backups. Like, they beat the six. They, they beat the Sixers 18. They beat the 18. So it's like, it's a big problem, man. It ain't about spirit. Like, I mean, if it's about spirit. He keeps saying it, though. Isn't, he keeps saying this, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, the, it's starting to seem like it's the go-to. Like, when stuff goes wrong, it's the go-to. Like, you know, it, it got to be bigger than spirit. They were in their locker room for, like, you no. Know, typically the coach comes out, uh, I want to yeah, say, like five, ten, ten minutes. minutes. Yeah, yeah, but that brother was back there for a while, so it got to be bigger yeah. than spirit. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. When I did the post game, uh, Tom McGinnis and I, we did a, we started our segment, the second segment of the show, because Doc wasn't ready yet, and we knew at that point that it would be a while. Tom came to me early. I started the post game show, and then as we were talking, then Doc Rivers came out, and you could tell how frustrated he was for sure. So I, I don't know, man. The spirit part that you talk about is the spirit more so. Um, you know, the energy thing that we're talking about or the want to, the effort, you, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah the, it, it's, it, it was definitely a problem. This was, to me, the New York loss was annoying because of how they had a 21-point lead, all that. We can talk about being tired with 53 games played under your belt already, and you need a break, and the all-star break is coming, but you have four more games to play, not including this one. You have to find a way to muster that up because you are right there. You went from being, um, uh, at this stage, three games back to start the night to now five games uh, back. Oh, pardon me, four games back to start tonight. You could have knocked that down to two uh, with the win over the Celtics. So the Celtics now have both games locked in. You have two more games to play against them. You are five and five with the division matchups. They need to start winning some of these games. This one kind of tells a little bit of a story to your point where Boston – uh, may look at this one and they have over the course of the last couple of years because they've been having the Sixers number even though they split the season series that they know they feel like they can beat the Sixers so this one I, this was the worst loss for me uh, of, of the season arguably Keith because of how they how it went down without four of their starters well I mean for you that's the worst the worst one to me was still the one we got into our debate with when they got drilled by the Spurs Right. Oh, uh, game number three. <laughs> yeah, that was still. Yeah, that was kind of bad. But yeah, this one was hard. I mean, this one they just. I mean, this one just to me, they look like a team that's just not there yet. I mean, you know, you could say they got exposed, or you could just say weaknesses were. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like not exposed, but things that we knew that they were, were highlighted. Yeah. Were highlighted. Yeah. But uh, that other one to me, I mean, this was a bad loss. But it was still – they lost by seven points, right? But the way – it should have been a blowout. But that other one, that was that was horrible, man. That they, they had the Spurs on the bench laughing at them. <laughs> that was horrible. You know what I mean? That was bad. Well, it was game three. So, hey, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, this one is 50 games in. And 
still can't figure the Celtics out, especially when you have guys on the Celtics side that are key and did not play. Yeah. So uh, that's that's that, man. We can just move on from that because we have some other bigger things to talk about, and that is the trade deadline, Keith. We need to figure out if the Sixers are going to do anything by 3 p.m. today. Uh, when the trade deadline hits 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, will they do anything, Keith, uh, by the by the deadline? We'll tump, jump into that. And we'll also get into the big moves that have already been made, a couple of blockbusters, if you will, around the NBA, how they also – affect the 76ers we'll tap into that next right here on locked on 76ers yeah let's talk about fan duel right you know this year the only app you need at your super bowl party is fan duel america's number one sports book we're excited i'm talking about really excited about our new sports betting partner for locked on because they're the number one sports book in america and it's fan duel and if you're new to fan duel that's even better They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000, excuse me, people, $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads and to who will score a touchdown. So how this is what you do. Join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more at FanDuel, the official sports bet partner of the NFL. Welcome back to Locked On 76ers. The uh, NBA trade deadline is approaching and Locked On has you covered Thursday, today, February 9th. Tune into Locked On NBA on YouTube at 2 Eastern to hear reaction from the trades that will change the rest of the NBA season. Who becomes contenders and who is tanking for a better future? Subscribe to Locked On NBA on YouTube and don't miss a deal. Keith? What are we looking at for the Sixers? Some deals are being made. We're not seeing their names attached to anything. A name that was out there attached to the Sixers, whom we talked about, was uh, Jared Vanderbilt of the Utah Jazz. He was sent as part of a uh, three-team deal that uh, sent D'Angelo Russell to the Lakers, back to the Lakers, Russell Westbrook, and draft compensation, as such as a first-round pick to Utah, uh, and Mike Conley Jr. to Minnesota. It looks like uh, here's the deal uh, overall. Timberwolves, let's see, D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt to the Lakers, Russell Westbrook in the first round pick to Utah, Mike Conley, second round pick to Minnesota uh, in this three team deal. So, Jared Vanderbilt, again, a name that was mentioned here for the 76ers they're gonna have to now look elsewhere because he's not coming here uh what if anything are you hearing that you can share right now and uh how do they now adjust with uh this one player now off the board i mean i you know it's one of those things where the sixers really as much as they wanted them they really didn't have the uh the assets to go get them i mean you know and i, I wrote this a couple of days ago um, where it was one of those things where uh, uh, Utah, I keep saying Minnesota because both of those guys came from Minnesota, but yeah. Utah was telling teams like, hey, we're going to package these guys and we want draft picks for them. Well, the Sixers didn't have the money or or the assets to, to acquire both of them. And then and then secondly, they didn't have the uh, the draft picks that needed to get both of them as well. So I felt like as much as you you wanted it, it was just a tough task. Now, the thing that I'm hearing is is that the Sixers just really don't have a lot to deal with, a lot to play with. Like a lot of teams, you look at these these teams now, everybody and their mom, they want draft. They want draft picks, like first-round draft picks. They want other things. The Sixers just don't have the assets right now. And um, and then also – is I'm hearing that some teams are, are are scared to like even deal with them because they feel like 
if you go to them and if you don't have a really good offer and you're really not really trying to put stuff out there that other people may find out about it or some people don't really want to deal with they just want to deal with daryl they may not want to deal i don't know it's it's just it's just a lot of talk and back and forth about it but i just really think that the sixers just don't have the assets to get a major deal done um at this particular time now it could happen well we we always said we didn't think it would be a major deal it would be something small yeah yeah so we'll see i mean especially the way furcon cork miles was going around the locker room having teammates sign um autographing jerseys for him whoa yeah so I was like, hey, Ferk, did you get that call yet? He's like, nah, nothing. I'm not, I'm I promise you I didn't get anything yet. But I, I it looked like Furkan um in that locker room, he looked like a guy that's like, yo, I'm about to be out, and I know it. He walked over to James, James signed the number a number one Sixers jersey, and then he walked over to uh um Joel and Joel signed it. Um, that I saw when I was in there. So mm. I think wow. Ferk is out, bro. Well, Ferk believes he's out, and uh, we'll see about some of the others because uh, Matisse Thibault has been a name that you and I have talked about. Uh, Daniel House has fallen out of the rotation. The backup big man minutes, Joel B played 39 minutes last night, Keith, and Montrez Harrell was the only one to get those other uh, eight minutes or so. Uh, at that center position. So I'm still very curious to see if they do, in fact, go out there and acquire uh, another big man to help out. And just for the Sixer fans out there, viewers, listeners, let's not forget about the buyout period. We'll see what happens. Uh, there was another trade. Yaka Pirtle uh, was traded back to the Toronto Raptors, Keith. He was a part of the Kawhi Leonard deal years ago. Um, Yaka Pirtle going back to the Toronto Raptors. Kim Birch going to the San Antonio Spurs. Not quite sure what they're doing. Of course, they need size, but it seemed like they were more along the lines, Toronto, of having a fire sale with all their players. That one is is pretty interesting. So uh, we'll see. And there were a few others that will also impact the 76ers, Toronto, and uh, we'll get into uh, the other one that we need to talk about here in the final segment. Keith, Uh, This is Locked On 76ers. We'll dive into next uh, the big blockbuster, Kyrie Irving. He axed out. He got what he wanted. He's in Dallas now with Luka Doncic. It seemed like Kevin Durant was having discussions, and he felt like he needed to now move on. And a blockbuster has, in fact, gone down, according to multiple sources, where Kevin Durant is headed to Phoenix. We'll tell you who's that for. We'll get into it all next and how it affects the Sixers right here on Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Keith, I was telling you a little bit earlier about the Lakers three-way deal with Minnesota and Utah left out also in the deal. Juan Toscano Anderson and Damian Jones going to the Jazz from L.A. Nikhil Alexander Walker from Utah to Minnesota as well with some picks that that are all involved in things. But the latest one, Keith, uh, that we had a chance to take a peek at was uh, let's not forget about this one. New York traded for um Josh Hart from the Port from the Portland Trailblazers, Villanova guy coming back to uh, New York to team up with Jalen Brunson, fellow Villanova player. Unfortunately, I thought it was going to be three when I first saw it going down with Ryan Archidiacono there. He is going to Portland with Cam Reddish, and uh, one more player I thought it was that was going to going to Portland, but Cam Reddish. Ryan Archidiakono and Svi Mayaholic going to the Blazers where the Knicks are acquiring Josh Hart. What do you make of that deal first? Um, I mean, that's all right. I mean, Which I that's what a player that you might have been interested in or Cam Reddish for that matter. Nah, I mean, no, no, I mean, no. Uh, I mean, they're, 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 I mean, they're, they're, they're good guys, 
But I mean, are they difference makers? Like, are they like if it's getting Josh Hart and, and, and Cam Reddish? Now, don't get me wrong, I like I like both of them. They both have ties to this area. But are they two dudes that I'm gonna say, okay, this is the missing piece to win a championship, especially after what we saw uh last night? Nah. Uh the Josh Hart part for me more than the reddish angle because of the defense that we talked about, knowing that you're gonna have players like J uh Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Then you go to Miami with uh, obviously Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry, the guards that they have there, and, and looking at some of the other players in the Eastern Conference that you're gonna have to attend to, like uh, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton at the guard position, Pat Connaughton shooting the way he is. So I, I look at that when we talk about the lack of defense on the perimeter. Josh Hart is a player that I'm, I would have been interested in, depending on uh, if the Sixers had enough player-wise to, to move in the deal. Uh, the other one, as we already mentioned, the Spurs and Toronto Raptors, late on uh, Wednesday night, Keith, going into Thursday, the Phoenix Suns uh, have uh, traded for Kevin Durant. And uh, in the deal with Ke for Kevin Durant, uh, new owner Matt Ishbia, he seemed like he wanted to come in and make a splash and make a make something happen right away. We talked about uh, him coming in and, and being a big deal. Suns is sending Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, four first round picks, Keith, a 2028 pick swap, and uh, for Durant and TJ Warren. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, I mean that's a good trade, not for you. But yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it's a, I don't know, but see, it's a good crate, but it's kind of like they better win that championship right about now. I mean, it's, it's good to say we all in, but you better win that championship right about now, <laughs> you know? And, and then, because if not, it could get a little crazy because you gave up some young assets, like you gave up. You know, I'm not saying this because that's your cousin, but Mikael Bridges could have been an all-star this year. Yeah, had everybody <laughs> stay healthy and the way he was playing, um, I think he would have made the all-star team. And that was something that we talked about, getting ready to, uh, you know, go to Utah or early on. You know, we saw it, and then we changed. But, um, yeah, this is different. This is definitely different. Uh, they're going all in. And do they have enough? They kept DeAndre Ayton. So they have Aiden Bridges. Part, all right, let me allow myself to not say it anymore because I'm used to it. Aiden, um, Paul, Booker, and Durant. Uh, I'm guessing there that Torrey Craig may stay in the starting lineup now. You have Damian Lee there, campaign. Is that enough overall? Bismack Biombo, is that enough? As I'm now, to your point, Keith, getting text myself. <laughs> so when we're done, I got a couple phone calls to make. Yeah, I mean, is it? Is, what does this mean now for the Nets? For the Nets, they have now. When you look at it, um, Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, Cam Johnson, Mikhail, Jay Crowder, who they may look according to uh, some of the things that we have heard. Uh, may look to move him in a separate deal. Uh, they do have defensive stuff. Nick Claxton, uh, borderline all-star, the way that he has played. I'd be very curious to see if he is a injury replacement possibility, but I think James Harden will probably get in. You agree with that? Kevin Durant not playing any all-star game now. Jalen Brown has a broken face. He's going to be out for a few weeks. James Harden, by the way, probably make the all-star team, Keith. We'll see about that as a uh, as a, a reserve player um what do you you since i'm a little bit you know into this here what do you look at with the nets now in the eastern conference without durant irving but restocking a bit here i don't know players? i think they're gonna have trouble man it looks like they're rebuilding dude yeah that's what it looks like i mean yeah i mean it, it just i mean don't get me wrong it's gonna be a young team it, it's I mean, you got a uh, Bridges is is a good player, but they're all young players. It looks like they're building for the future. Um, I mean, 
let's just say the Knicks run the city again. I mean, like they're just gonna start getting. I mean, well, they are always have, but but it's just like they don't have any 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 uh, mega stars to contend with. You got Ben Simmons and a bunch of young guys, right? I thought I was getting away from him. Be honest with you. Just being honest, everybody. <laughs> You out there hating on my man. <laughs> hey, I never had a problem with him personally. I just don't want to watch him play basketball. He's not good right now. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, they got to – it's just a bad situation because when you look at it, it was one of those things. And I, I think, you know, this is a, a learning thing. Um, you know, you look at two players who said, hey, we we, we could go anywhere together. We're coming to you, Brooklyn. We're going to put you on the mat. And it's been a struggle the whole time. I, I think what the best that they had was a second round, what appearance we're talking about with KD, yeah. Kyrie. Yeah. And then Kyrie missed more games at one point than he played in. It right? was James and, playing on a torn hamstring with Kevin Durant. Yeah. And, it was, and they were a toe away from making it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Exactly. And then now it was all gone. It's all yeah. gone. It's all gone. Well, we'll see what the Sixers do, man. Uh, teams in the Eastern Conference, you know they're going to make some moves. Let's see if they keep up with them. Thanks for making Locked On 76 as your first listen every day. On our next episode, folks, we'll, of course, preview the Sixers and the Knicks, but we'll talk about the latest with the Sixers and uh, if they did anything or not with the trade deadline. Now, make your second listen, Locked On NBA. We're Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Keith, let the good folks know where they can find us. You can uh, find us wherever you get your podcast free and available. Tonight, you can find my man D from 10 to midnight on 97.5. Outside of that, you can find my man on Twitter at DevonG975. You can follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers. You can read my articles in the Philadelphia Inquirer. All right, man. We'll talk tomorrow, man. Let's see if there's some uh, Sixers name get included in some of this buzz. Okay, let's talk tomorrow, brother. You got it, man. Peace. See you.